In this video, I'm going to review the Angel or Angel website, stack it against the competition, and hopefully inspire you to create better web designs and make more money by selling higher quality websites. So if you want to know whether this website passes my truly professional website test assessment, make sure you watch until the end when I will reveal its grade and income potential. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm the Digital Alchemist and in this new series, the goal here is not to focus on flashy websites that require an army of designers and developers to build. Nope. But instead, the idea is to focus on one website design that could be created by one single person or by a very small team. And this in order to inspire you and help you assess the quality and potential income of a website. So today I'm going to focus on the Angel or Angel website. So I find this website either on Web Design Inspiration or on Site Inspire. And it's this one right here. And just so we're on the same page, here is how I'm going to proceed. I will assess this website over four topics. First impressions, identity, content, and technical. Each topic will be noted on five points and the final assessment will be noted on 20 points. Now, please know that this is my subjective assessment and not the universal truth, but I've been creating websites for a living for many years and I have quite some experience doing that. So let's start with the first impressions that can be broken down into desktop, mobile, tablet, and versus the competition. Okay, so let's start with my first impressions on the desktop and the first impressions are really good. You can see this is definitely a trend. Many of the websites I reviewed lately on the channel got this video hero. Even though traditionally I don't advise video, but that was before because it's like now, I mean, especially when you're trying to demonstrate a product, well, I still believe that in some cases an image is better, but yeah, in these cases it works really well. So first impression, really good. And then as I start scrolling, the quality of the images, the identity, but we'll talk about that in a moment. All in all, the first impression is really, really good. It feels premium, it feels classy, it feels robust, it feels trusty, it feels like I, I can trust this company even before I know exactly what they do. Okay, next, let's take a look at the tablet version. I was a bit surprised to find the hamburger icon here in the middle, but it's very recognizable, it's you know easily found, and it gives the opportunity to put the call to action here on the top right corner. For the rest, looks as beautiful as on the desktop version. Even though we all know it's only going to be like four or five percent of the visitors watching the website on a tablet. Next, let's take a look at the mobile version. And now I can better understand why they did this move on the tablet version. It's because they also want to have a uh, call to action here in the top navigation, always visible. So for the rest, the first impression is really good also for the mobile. I would have liked a bit more space here between the edges. I think especially for people that have big, fi big fingers, you know, can be quite uncomfortable. So I would have uh, yeah, added more padding, but yeah, for the rest of the website also, because I don't know if it's a design decision, but I would have liked more padding. Okay, next let's stack it against the competition. I went on to Google and open a few of the competitors website. So this one looks quite modern with the trends, especially the trends that I don't really like, um, but it looks quite modern, you know, all in all very professional just don't like those big shadows well, that's a debate for another video uh this one here is way more traditional a bit boring to be honest then we get this one it's from the the government but hey what do you expect from the government in terms of design anyway uh then we get this one um yeah meh but when you compare it to angel or angel i may want to pronounce it this website looks way more modern, uh, more premium, more everything, basically. The identity is, you know, top notch. We'll talk about that in a moment. But yeah, all in all, works well. So for these reasons, for my first impressions, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. Okay, next, let's move on to the identity, which can be broken down into the logo, the colors, the fonts, and the style versus the target. Okay, so let's start with the logo. So let's take a look at this logo. Now, as you may know, I love typographic logos and this one is beautiful. I think the font is really beautiful. 
The A is very recognizable, even though you've seen this A time and time again in terms of identity, because you only need to remove this part here and then you get your A, but you know, all in all, it works well and it's very recognizable. So yeah, uh, kudos to them for this logo. Okay, next let's talk about the color palette. So we got this black or very dark gray, you got this beige, uh, this kind of sepia color, and then they used uh, the blue color for the accent color. Now, it's not the color I would have chosen. Uh, you know, with this palette, I would have seen something like an orange, um, even red, but yeah, maybe they want to have that trust factor that blue has. But even if, you know, if I had to pick a blue, I would have picked a different blue, but hey, it's not just my opinion and it's not my website. All in all, it works well because you see the calls to action. You see the accent color. I just would have chosen a different color. But for the rest, I really love this uh, dark gray palette uh, with the kind of sepia tone also that we saw earlier on. And it works really well here. It's just plain beautiful, in my opinion. When you look at this, the way they present the products, usually it's just products on the white background. And here it looks really beautiful. OK, next, let's take a look at the fonts. As you can see here, we got Helvetica now display. Then same for this one, same for this one, same for this one. And yeah, same for all, basically all the fonts. So we continue with this trend that we saw in the latest uh, reviews. They only have one font. And as you may know, it's always advised to have a maximum of three fonts. Two is even better. But lately, lots of websites, especially premium websites, only have one font and it's just a beautiful font in my opinion okay next let's talk about the style versus the target and when you look at the bikes they look really premium so this is not an e-commerce website i didn't see any price but when i just when i look at the build of those bikes they must be quite expensive and if you think about the target of this company well basically if you're going to pay something a premium, you'd expect that the website and all communication means would be premium. And here it really works well. So for all these reasons, for the identity, I'm going to give it a grade of 4.5 out of 5. OK, next, let's move on to the content topic, which can be broken down into navigation, quantity, quality and funnel. OK, so let's start with the navigation. Well, the main navigation here, it's very simple. You got this, which is company. Uh, uh, employees and bikes because yes I can speak French and here you got contact then you got some more links in the footer but this is for the main header so very simple now if we take a look at the tablet version it's not a full screen navigation it's just here the header appears I would have liked a full screen navigation especially because here when you're on the mobile when you click on the navigation it's full screen and in my opinion it's way better than this little header right here on top when you're on the tablet version. Now let's talk about the quantity of content. Well, from the get go, when you look at the top navigation, it looks like there's nothing on this website. But then when you go here in the footer, you see that there are some other elements. But all in all, not many pages on this website. Not that they need to, you know, always need to have a website with 50 pages. The way they organize the information is super clean and there is a lot of content, but not a lot of pages. OK, next, let's talk about the quality of the content. And from the get go, you can see the images are high quality. Uh, you can see that it's a professional photographer that took the pictures and you would expect no less from such a website than such a company. But all the pictures, all the images, um, even the 3D images, everything is really premium, works really well. They also use video and you can see that it was made by professionals, even though the resolution doesn't look that great, but you know, that's for optimization purposes, but the video itself is super quality. And next let's talk about calls to actions or funnels. Well, the main call to action is contact and you know, contact is nice. It's a call to action. It's always visible, you know, always on screen. But maybe you want to be more specific about call to action. Contact you for what? You know, here uh, it's discover and be contacted. But yeah, at least they got calls to action everywhere. So kudos to them uh, for that because too many websites look beautiful, but they have no call to action. 
So for all these reasons, for the content, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. Okay, next let's move on to the technical side of things, which can be broken down into speed, dynamism, interactions, and the use of trends. Okay, so first let's talk about the speed of the website. So let's click on one link. And as you can see, they got this transition page. So it feels like it's not really slow, but it's a bit, you know, on the slow side, not that slow, but you know, I've seen faster websites, but the thing is, it doesn't frustrate me when I browse this website. I never felt like I was frustrated like I was on some other websites while I was preparing this video. So it works well, especially given the sheer amount of uh, visuals, pictures and videos that you get on each page. Because as I said, there's a lot of content, but not many pages. So I think it's quite well optimized. So let's go to another page. You can see one, two, three. You know, it's very... It's on the edge. It's at the limit where it becomes frustrating, but because of this uh, transition animation, you don't really feel it. I only felt it because, yeah, I'm trying to comment uh, in, a, in order to make this video, but for the rest, when I click, okay, I see the logo, and by the time I think about it, I'm already on the page, so no frustration. But yeah, maybe they could optimize. Don't forget, maybe they optimize with a CDN in France and I'm you know I'm 10,000 kilometers away from France so maybe they did not invest in a CDN remote location close to where I live so that could explain that. Next dynamism or in other words does the website feel alive or does it feel flat? Well as you can see there are some subtle animations here I don't know if you can see it and same thing here for the mobile so all in all it's really subtle but it works well in my opinion it's uh it's nice to browse this website not many moving parts but not that you'd want to you know when too many things move you don't uh you wouldn't really like that the addition of video really helps so all in all in terms of dynamism it's all good next let's talk about interactions and to be honest i didn't really see any interaction except from the toggle here or the accordion for the rest not many interactions uh, maybe this one here when you scroll you get this horizontal scrolling so that's one interaction but for the rest i didn't see that many usually interactions and micro interactions are really good because you're trying to get the visitor to commit to click on something and then that really helps when you you're going to ask them to take an action with a call to action so here yeah just the accordions but for the rest not many interactions so in that perspective you know it could be enhanced next let's talk about the implementation of current trends and don't forget we're not trying to be a fashion victim you're trying to implement the trends but not all of them at the same time and here the first trend we see is the gigantic font and it's beautiful here and it works really well especially when you're looking for your region you're not gonna miss it so it's intelligent implementation of trends in that case when you go to the top we see that video hero trend uh, that I'm uh, growing to love more and more and for the rest yeah we don't see that many other trends or maybe yeah, a bit of asymmetrical design but very well implemented and some some shadows also that you see implemented okay another example of asymmetrical design here so all in all I really like the way they implemented the trends not too many not too little but with good taste so for all these reasons for technical I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five so at the time of reviewing this website, when we add all the grades, it adds up to 16.5 out of 20, which is a very good grade. Knowing that I consider anything 14 and above a professional website that you can sell for a higher than average price. Okay, now let's talk about income potential. Now a little disclaimer here. When we talk about income potential, of course, where you live really matters. Do you live in Switzerland or in Bangladesh? in the United States of America or in Romania. But if you factor in the number of pages, the nice identity, the minimal design with a good use of trends, then you could probably sell this website between five and 15K depending on your sales skills. Here I'm talking in dollars or it could be Euro depending on the conversion rate. But don't forget, some people would never be able to sell this website for more than 500 bucks that with the same quality, of course, but they wouldn't be able to sell more than 500 bucks, while others would sell it for a minimum of 100K. So it really depends on your sales skills. And like we saw a moment ago, it also depends on your location because $5,000 
isn't the same thing in Los Angeles and in Bangkok. That's the hard truth. But I'm just giving you an average income potential. Now, of course, whether you create this website in six weeks, three months, six months or a year is also going to determine if it's profitable or not. But let's say that the website did cost between 5K and 15K. Well, my guess is that the clients would be very, very happy with the results, especially when you stack it against some of the competition. Now, how would I build it? Well, it doesn't really matter if you outsource the development, hand code it yourself or use WordPress. Clients only care about end results and return on investment. Now, personally, I think I could build something similar with WordPress, Elementor Pro, affiliate link in the description, plus probably Jet Engine and WP Rockets, just to give you an idea of the main plugins I would be using. But of course, you could build this with Bricks, with Gutenberg or with the builder that you are most efficient with. At the end of the day, they're just tools. What matters is the end result. So today we reviewed a bike mobility company's website, but which type of industry's website would you like me to review next? Please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and my work, please give it a thumbs up because it's really gonna help the channel and it doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want more web design goodness, consider subscribing and smashing the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. I hope that this video will help you become a better web designer and sell higher end websites. So I'll see you in the next one and don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had Ahead when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe. Cut. <laughs>